Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor on Ag Am in Kansas. I'm your host, Conrad Capus. Kansas agriculture provides for some of the world's demand for crops, and this supply couldn't be achieved without education on how to develop outstanding yields. That's why a series of sorghum production schools were offered in early February of 2015 to provide in-depth training targeted for sorghum producers. The schools were held in a variety of locations, and the one Ag Am in Kansas attended was in Hutchison. Take a look. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. This segment is brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor on Ag Am in Kansas. I'm your host, Conrad Capus. Pests are always a tricky problem for producers because of the costs, education, and supply it takes to eradicate them from an operation. That's why a series of sorghum production schools were offered in early February of 2015 to provide in-depth training targeted for sorghum producers, including ones that are having problems with pests in their crops. The schools were held at a variety of locations, and the one Ag Am in Kansas attended was in Hutchison. And this one was sponsored by several entities with an interest in the sorghum industry. Take a look. I'm Jeff Whitworth. I'm an extension specialist in entomology. We were in Hutchison, Kansas today at the sorghum school, our annual sorghum school. Um, today I was talking about insects that affect sorghum. Uh, probably our most consistent number one pest all across the state as far as sorghum goes and maybe a little bit in corn also is the chinch bug. Uh, the true chinch bug is sometimes mistaken for a false chinch bug but there's considerable differences especially in the amount of damage that they can do. False chinch bug doesn't really do damage. A true chinch bug really can. The true chinch bug actually is right now is overwintering in bunch grasses or in residue out in uh, some of the fields that have heavy residue. Uh, if the winters don't get too bad, we found that the chinch bugs have been able to survive winters just in residue. Otherwise, they're around the root systems in bunch grasses, the little blue stems, etc. Then, um, you know, probably whenever the wheat starts to break dormancy, the chinch bugs, the adults will move out of the bunch grass and the residue or wherever they are overwintering and they will move into the wheat. They will start feeding in the wheat. Uh, like I said, it's once the wheat breaks dormancy. They'll start feeding in the wheat probably for, oh, two to three weeks. And then they'll start mating and they'll start laying eggs. Um, and then the eggs will hatch and the little nymphs are red. They'll start feeding in the wheat also. Um, then they start moving out of the wheat as the wheat starts to senesce or starts to turn yellow. It starts losing its juice, in other words. So it's not a suitable host for the chinch bug. And as that starts to happen, they start moving out of the, uh, out of the wheat, moving into the sorghum or corn, whichever the uh, adjacent crop is. And they can do a real number on seedling sorghum and or corn plants, especially in dry conditions. If the, if the moisture is lacking, um, the plants are struggling anyway for, because of moisture stress, they have thousands, literally hundreds and thousands of little um, plant sucking chinch bugs on them. Uh, they can do a number on these plants very quickly. The chinch bug, a native of the United States, is common to Midwest states and has a great effect on producers. The chinch bug naturally feeds on wild prairie grass, but when the Midwestern states were settled in the 19th century, crops of wheat, corn, sorghum, and other grains were planted and they adapted well to these new species as habitat and food. Throughout the 20th century, the chinch bug was a major pest to farmers as they quickly decimated corn and wheat fields. What we normally recommend is as that wheat starts to turn yellow, as it starts to senesce, get out and sample the wheat. If you find one chinch bug in one square foot in your wheat field, um, then delay planting your sorghum or your corn if you were going to plant adjacent to that wheat field. So just delay two to three weeks and uh, you shouldn't have a problem because the chinch bugs, when they're nymphs, they have to feed um, within seven to ten days or else they just die. So if there's no plants there for them to eat, uh, they'll just naturally um, go away and then you can plant your sorghum or your corn and you won't have a problem with chinch bugs.
This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Tall Grass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tall Grass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas Farmers. Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor on Ag Game in Kansas. I'm your host, Conrad Cabus. There are a variety of insects that producers tackle on a daily basis, and pests are always a tricky problem for producers because of the costs, education, and supply it takes to eradicate them from the operation. That's why a series of sorghum production schools were offered in early February of 2015 to provide in-depth training targeted for sorghum producers, including ones that are having problems with pests in their crops. The schools were held at a variety of locations, and the one Ag Aim in Kansas attended was in Hutchison. And this one was sponsored by several entities with an interest in the sorghum industry. Take a look. Uh, also, there are some other aphids uh, that can affect sorghum. Uh, one is the green bug. Green bugs used to be our primary sorghum pest back in the 70s and 80s, early 90s. Um, everybody was worried about green bugs. There was all kinds of plant breeding going on to develop resistance to the green bugs. And we do have five different biotypes of green bugs now. And we do have resistance to those green bugs, but primarily we don't have green bugs uh, to worry about anymore. So most of the growers don't worry about resistant varieties as far as green bugs. Um, and last year in 2014, we had our first official case of the white sugarcane aphid or the sorghum aphid, whichever uh, you prefer. It's the same insect. Uh, it's normally has been in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast states. It's moved from uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia. It's moved up to uh, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas. And last year in August, we found it in Sumner County um, in, in one field, I believe in Sumner County. Um, so that was our first official detection of the sorghum aphid in Kansas. This aphid can be devastating. And it depends on when it comes in. We don't really think it's going to overwinter in Kansas. We're not sure whether it's going to overwinter in Oklahoma or not. But, you know, it just depends on how fast it migrates south, or I mean how fast it migrates north uh, once the growing season starts as to whether it's actually going to cause a problem in sorghum producing place in sorghum producing uh, fields in Kansas. It can reproduce quite rapidly as all aphids can because they do not re they do not mate. They do not have to wait for eggs to hatch. They're just all females. They produce females. Three to five days later those females are feeding and they're reproducing more females so those populations can explode very very quickly. Um, whether it's a green bug or the the sorghum aphid, either one, the, those populations can just go bananas on you very quickly. Especially uh, anymore, we're spraying a lot of alfalfa fields, we're spraying a lot of wheat fields, so we're killing a lot of the beneficial insects that help hold some of these aphids in check. So if we do get the sorghum aphid early on, uh, it could be a problem. There's no way to tell, but one of the nice things is there is some resistance available in some commercial varieties. If uh, we do start having consistent problems with the uh, sorghum aphid, uh, there's some, like I said, some varieties that have some resistance so, so that it shouldn't be a problem early on. There are some insecticides that are just being registered, special local need insecticides to spray later in the year as a foliar spray, which do a pretty good job of controlling the aphid. So I think if we do have it, and if it does become a problem, we have some of the management tactics that we can uh, use to help overcome the problem. Be sure to discuss any problems that you have on your operation with local extension agents if you are unsure what to do. Thanks for watching. We'll have more after the break.
From the Land of Kansas is a trademark program that helps Kansas businesses grow, produce, process, or manufacture Kansas products. Let's meet Holyfield Vineyard and Winery, located in Baser, Kansas. Starting in 1994, this small family-owned winery was named for the days when their 158th Street address was called Holyfield Road. The 30-acre estate includes a 14-acre vineyard planted with 10 varieties of Native American and French hybrid grapes that produce 15 top-quality wines. Offering a warm and friendly atmosphere for visitors, Holyfield also hosts many events during the year, including live music, dancing, a Mardi Gras party, a murder mystery dinner, and a traditional German Oktoberfest to celebrate the bountiful harvest. Come to Baser, Kansas and enjoy all this and more. For a full list of wines and an event schedule, visit HolyfieldWinery.com. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect. By people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer, who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Poe. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. Tarwater Farm and Home is a nearly 40-year-old local family-owned business. Clothing for work and play, seeds and feeds, boots, toys for the kids, the tools you need for around the home and farm, and a service department to keep them in top running order. It's a big store, so when you have some time, take some time to see what they have for your farm and home. Tarwater's everyday pricing is like other sale prices. When you need it, they've got it. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor on Ag Game in Kansas. I'm your host, Conrad Kavis. Kansas agriculture provides for some of the world's demand for crops, and this supply couldn't be achieved without education on how to develop outstanding yields. That's why a series of sorghum production schools were offered in early February of 2015 to provide in-depth training targeted for sorghum producers. The schools were held in a variety of locations, and the one Ag AM in Kansas attended was in Hutchinson. My name is Kendall Hodson. I'm here in uh, Hutchinson, Kansas, uh, at sorghum school, uh, basically learning uh, production methods and uh, uh, practices for uh, growing sorghum. Uh, some of us have done a lot of years, but uh, we always hope to learn more, and they're giving us some good information here. Although squarely in the middle of the country, Kansas has long relied on international trade to bolster its economy. It grows or makes plenty of ag commodities that are popular around the world, from corn to sorghum. The state's farmers and agribusinesses exported 2.6 billion worth of goods in 2013. Well, I'm always interested in, uh, in growing crops. Uh, this uh, particular uh, session is about sorghum. 
uh, we grow a number of crops. We do a, a good rotation. We're in no-till, so we need a rotation to, to make that work. And uh, sorghum has been a, uh, an up-and-coming crop. I think uh, it, the markets have uh, gotten a lot of excitement about sorghum. So uh, there's a pretty full house here today and a lot of other people wanting to learn the same thing. Kansas is, uh, is often called the wheat state, but we're also the sorghum state. We raise uh, more than half of the sorghum for the whole nation. So it's a very important uh, area for it. Um, it's uh, taken a little uh, backseat to some other crops in recent years, but I, I think there's some real excitement. Uh, so there's some momentum building with the research and uh, the markets. And uh, there's always room for more, uh, more sorghum. It's a naturally drought resistant crop and where water is limited, that's a, that's a valuable uh, thing to have. Kendall farms in central Kansas and also represents farmers on a national scale. Yeah, I, I do farm in central Kansas, and uh, that's, that's obviously my first job in, in life. But I do uh, uh, represent other farmers on a national board. I hope to uh, take the, uh, the benefits of growing sorghum uh, to them. There's a number of things that uh, the national sorghum producers are doing. Uh, we're primarily involved with policy and uh, the farm bill implementation, you know, the crop insurance, all those issues that, uh, that affect us in one way or another. I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Poe. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor in Ag AM in Kansas. I'm your host, Conrad Cavus. Kansas State Agronomy tries to help producers every chance they get, and that's why a series of sorghum schools were offered in early February of 2015 to provide in-depth training targeted for sorghum producers. 
The schools were held in a variety of locations, and one of them Aga in Kansas attended was in Hutchison. And this one was sponsored by several entities with an interest in the sorghum industry. Take a look. Well, here we are on the sorghum schools, and today I would like to talk about some tips about, I mean, sorghum production practices. I mean, what are the things that we need to focus, I mean, when we are planting sorghum around the state? One of the first main factors is about plant population. So, I mean, talking about seeding rates. And then when we are thinking about seeding rates, we need to probably talk, I mean, a few tips about if you are in Western Kansas and if we are going in the central area of Kansas. So let's give you a couple of examples. Western Kansas, when we are thinking about seeding rates, we are probably talking about maybe 20 or 30,000 uh, seeds per acre. We would like to get probably low plant population because we know that we probably have some susceptibility to a stress and the yield potential might be lower. So what happens if we move from there to the central area of Kansas? In those situations, I mean, our recommendations, we are seeing maximization of yields and their populations are there from 40,000 to 70,000 plants per acre. Seeding rate is very important for farmers to pay attention to when calculating emergence later in the season. One quick tip when you are thinking about people talking about plant population and if you want to translate those numbers into the seeding rates, we need to always consider that plant from plant population to seeding rate, it might be probably a 20%. So we are trying to add a 20% of, I mean, emergence. I mean, and we always have some kind of a flexibility. The numbers are always going from 70 to 100%, but of, Amer of uh, final success and on emergence. But the numbers that we are using most of the times is 80% as a final emergence. So a quick example, if you are looking to uh, 40,000 plants per acre, we need to try to estimate at least almost close to 10,000 seeds more. So the final seeding rate will be around 50,000 50, seeds per acre. Another quick tip will be about the base temperature and soil temperature. When you are looking about, I mean, when to plant sorghum, I mean, most of the times we are thinking soil temperatures should be around 60 and 65 degrees on the four inch of the soil depth. So when you're looking to plant your sorghum crop, make sure that you have those states, I mean, and then some of the questions that we also receive on the planting practices are about planting dates. Uh, on planting dates on sorghums are really showing a kind of a nice di diversity on how to maximize yields, but we have a very consistent equation that most of the times, early June planting times are showing maximization of yields. So when you're looking at all the different combining practices, another one that we should also consider would be the narrow row spacing or the row spacing. So the questions that are coming to us are 30 inch versus 15 inch or 30 inch versus, I mean, narrow spacing. Some of the information that we summarize are showing that the narrow row spacing is adding yields and is a benefit for, I mean, maximizing yields only in situations when the yields are above 70 bushels. That means that I will narrow my, I mean, I will narrow spacing only in situations that I will try to capture more light and I will have a high yield potential. What happened in low yielding environments, less than 70 bushes, those environments, we are not seeing that much benefit of using narrow spacing and 30 inch row spacing, it seems that it's working very well. So last point about hybrid selection. When you're looking at hybrid, we need to look at different points. Standability is one. We, we are seeing some lodging issues, and we are seeing also tolerance to different disease. So when you're looking to hybrid, make sure that you check the label of the hybrids. Another quick uh, recommendation is also to take a look to the selection of early, medium, or late maturity based on the planting dates. We are almost seeing that planting dates, early June, regardless what different type of hybrids are we using, are maximizing yields. But any time that we are moving from uh, before early June or later early June, selection of hybrids is making a huge impact. So make sure to do a proper selection of hybrids based on standability, I mean, tolerance to this disease, and also make sure that we are matching the growing season, I mean, and the length of the growing season with the hybrid selection. Those are just a few quick tips that you need to take into account when we are producing sorghum and when we are trying to maximize, I mean, sorghum production around the state of Kansas. Thanks. Thank you for watching this episode of Farm Factor on Ag Game in Kansas. For more of Farm Factor, or if you want to view this program again, visit us on www.agameincansas.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. So have a good day with good luck. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers.